the U.S. and Chinese economies are highly interdependent. So when either of us takes measures for unilateral advantage, uh, it hurts the other side, but it actually sometimes hurts us too. In, in other words, it is hard to see any significant step that either side can take without an impact on both of us. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, China's currency manipulations, its politics and impact. When it comes to trading with the U.S., it's no secret that China's vast export machine is a sore spot for many American workers and lawmakers. For years now, China has kept the value of its currency low, which also helps keep prices low on the goods it sells in the U.S. Many argue the practice has been costly, more than one million American jobs lost and a more anemic GDP. Lawmakers are mulling over ways to level the playing field, but it's a complicated issue with no easy solution, notes senior fellow Kenneth Lieberthal. So Ken, what is the impact of Chinese currency manipulation on the U.S. economy? The broad effect is to uh, favor China in terms of increasing its exports over its imports. The effect on U.S.-China trade bilaterally is somewhat different. Uh, certainly the undervalued renminbi makes U.S. exports to China more expensive and so presumably reduces our export volume to China. In the other direction, though, China's exports to the United States, its effect is sharply limited. And it's limited by a peculiarity of that trade, which is to say about two-thirds of the value of every item that China exports to the United States consists of parts and components that China imported from somewhere else. So if the renminbi increases in value, the renminbi cost of those parts and components that they've imported goes down. Right? So roughly two-thirds of the uh, change in the uh, uh, value of the renminbi vis-a-vis -vis the dollar gets offset by the fact that they're importing two-thirds of the value, which they then turn around through assembly or something like that and then export to the United States. So it would take a huge change in the value of the renminbi vis-a-vis -vis the U.S. dollar to have a very significant change on the value of Chinese exports. Uh, to the United States. Well, I think what it really comes down to, what most people are concerned about, are jobs. What does undervaluing this currency mean for jobs here in the States? I think most economists would agree that if China were to raise the value of its currency up to full market-determined value and became non-competitive in some of these export sectors, the exports would shift to Vietnam or other cheaper labor areas. In other words, very few of these products would now be made in the United States. Uh, in most of the products China exports to us, especially the cheap manufacturers, we became non-competitive many years ago. And so the Chinese uh, uh, measures to keep their exports competitive primarily affect Vietnam, India, Bangladesh, Indonesia, the Philippines, etc. Other countries that otherwise would be more competitive there. Uh, these jobs generally are not coming back to American shores. We need better quality jobs, higher up the value-added chain. Uh, it's the only way we're going to generate jobs here on a large scale. U.S. legislation to address this problem um, always speaks of tariffs. Is that what we really should do, impose more tariffs on China? The U.S. government's position is not one that in principle favors different tariffs on Chinese goods. What we do favor is using tariffs to have Chinese goods enter the U.S. at a fair market price. And so where we determine that an item is being sold at below its cost of production, in other words, it's being dumped in the U.S., then we seek to set a tariff level that makes the real cost of that good in the U.S. market what it ought to be given the cost of production in China. Methodology for determining that is something that is debated endlessly, and I'm not about to argue that the results are accurate or the best they could be. Uh, but that's the principle. In other words, we in principle don't say we want to raise barriers against imports from China. Uh, we recognize that imports from China are, you know, reduce the cost of living for Americans. Uh, but we want that to be on a fair market basis. Despite all of this, 
You say that China understands that it has to raise the value of its currency. Chinese themselves recognize that developments in Europe and North America and Japan mean that they cannot anticipate ongoing rapid growth of export markets. They have to shift to more demand being generated domestically. That would also satisfy people's needs and their desires much more, increase social stability at home. But to do that, they have to change the value of the renminbi. It's linked tightly into this whole series of, of uh, relationships uh, that ends up reducing domestic consumption in China. Uh, the reason they have not moved more rapidly is they're afraid that in the short term it will cost jobs in the export sector. Even though exports to the U.S. may not go down rapidly as they increase the value of the renminbi, uh, they uh, worry about exports to the rest of the world going down quite rapidly. And so losing a lot of export sector jobs and uh, they worry about social stability. So it's a matter of, sure, we know where we need to go but we're afraid to take major steps to get there. Well, the connections between the U.S. and China are many, and the U.S. and China have to see eye to eye on a number, a wide variety of issues. So what's to be done here? At the end of the day, well, we have a lot of complaints about, to my mind, in many cases, unfair practices by China that we really need to try to get corrected. Uh, we also have to take care. Uh, the, uh, you know, if we set up protection as barriers, that does not help American consumers, right? So you want to find ways to highlight the interdependence and highlight the potential for win-win outcomes if each of us will move on the issues that are of greatest concern to the other. Chinese complain about our restrictions on technology exports. Some of those restrictions are absolutely warranted by national security concerns and that kind of thing, I don't think anyone would argue that all of them are warranted. Uh, and they're being reviewed and hopefully they'll be adjusted so that we protect what we need to protect, but not extend those restrictions beyond what's really necessary. Uh, the Chinese are very worried about our domestic fiscal deficit because they're enormously heavily invested in the U.S. economy and the U.S. dollar. So, you know, our ability to move on some of these issues is in China's interest. China's ability to move on currency and some other issues is in our interest. We each need to keep in mind we're both in this together. Uh, each of us does better uh, when the other side does better too. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your Blackberry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.